Okay. Um, so uh, in the last class, I believe we showed how to solve right triangles and showed situations uh, in which uh, solving right triangles uh, was useful. So, so we saw various uh, problems from astronomy. Um, so what about solving non-right triangles? Um, so what Ptolemy did was he used a version of, and you can hopefully, so if you write it in modern terms, you can see that it kind of looks a little bit like the law of cosines. Um, and if you think about what the law of cosines is, the law of cosines is, is kind of like a generalization of the Pythagorean theorem. So it's kind of natural that they would kind of find it. So, so the way you prove the law of cosines is you take a, a, a general triangle and you cut it up into two right triangles. And you just do some math and you come up with the law of cosines. So that's how Ptolemy uh, solved right triangles. Um, so we were talking about uh, Nasser al-Din. Uh, he wrote this book, The Transversal Figure. Uh, and so when he came to be talking about uh, solving triangles, he used the sine law. And uh, the sine law is kind of typically easier to use than the cosine law. So the way that we usually write this, the sine law is that C divided by sine C equals B divided by sine B equals A divided by sine A. But of course, uh, uh, you could rearrange that thing. And so uh, what Nazar al-Din says was that the ratio of the sides equals the ratio of the sines. And uh, the proof of that is actually kind of kind of easy. So we'll, we'll have a look at it. Um, so, so we've got a triangle ABC. And so I've split it here into two cases. So there's a case where uh, one of the angles is obtuse, kind of like this. And there's the case where there is no obtuse, angle, all the angles are acute. Uh, but in either case, what you do is you just pre prolong the, uh, the, the sides of the triangle. So you prolong CA. So remember, the side CA is what we would call little b. It's the side opposite the angle b. You extend it. Uh, this, to, to a length of 60. And you do that with, with the both of them. Uh, and then you draw a circle. And the reason why you do a, a, a circle of radius 60 is because Nasser al-Din, uh, his definition of sign is to use a reference circle um, with a side of 60, with a radius of 60. Okay, But of course, it doesn't matter for the sign law Right, because uh, for the sine law, you're dealing with ratios. So if you multiply sine by 60, it just cancels out. So uh, since it's the law of ratios, it doesn't really matter what you use as a reference uh, circle. Okay, so you prolong the sides that you're interested in, uh, you draw a circle, and then you drop a, a perpendicular to the base. Okay, and that means you've constructed lengths of, uh, of side, sine, whatever you're interested in, right? Because remember, this sine is a length for them. And so this length, here we've got a circle of radius 60. So this length here is the actual definition of what sine is. Okay. And the interesting thing, it doesn't matter whether you're doing this one or this one. So for this one, you might get a little nervous because the angles are going in opposite directions, but that doesn't matter, right? Because sine of 180 degrees minus B equals sine of B. So it doesn't matter if you go it from the other way, you still got the, get the same length. Okay, and then you're good because then you've got a whole bunch of similar triangles. Right, because this triangle here is similar to this triangle here, and uh, uh, we'll put 
is the other one. So I've got ABL. This triangle is similar to this triangle. Oh, and this triangle is similar to that triangle. So you get a whole bunch of uh, ratios. And some of these lengths are defined to be 60. So for example, um, BT is 60. What's the other one that's 60? CD is 60 right there. Okay, and so you can solve both of these equations for 60 AL, and you'll get 60 times AL equals AB times TK, and it's equal to AC times DF. But AB is exactly size C, AC is exactly size B, and these are defined to be uh, this is defined to be sine of B, and this is sine of C. So you just rearrange that and you get the sine law. So it actually follows pretty, a lot easier than a lot, lot of the other proofs. Okay. Um, and so then how do you solve triangles? Okay, well, it depends what information you're given. You can be given two angles and a side. Okay, so once you're given two angles, then you know the third angle because it has to add up to 180. And then you just use the sine law. So for example, if we know what C, if we know what C is, if that's the given side, then we just find the other sides by taking C and multiplying it by the ratio of the sines. We don't really have to go through for an example of that. Um, Another piece would be we're given an angle and two sides. And if we're given an angle and two sides, there's two cases. Um, either we know a side opposite an angle or we don't. Okay, so let's say we know an angle opposite a known side. So let's say we know the sides A and C and the angle C. So this side is opposite the angle there. Okay, so we can find the angle A by using the sine law, right, by just uh, multiplying it by the ratio of the sides times sine C. That gives us our second angle. Then we can find our third angle because it has to add up to 180 degrees. And then we can find our third side again by using um, the sine law. Uh, a slightly harder case is what happens if we're given an angle and two sides, um, but we don't, uh, but the known angle is not opposite a, a known side. So for example, here we're given uh, the sides AC and the angle B. So we're given this. And we know that. Obviously, that defines a, a triangle. How do we find it? Um, well, you have to do a little bit of work. You drop a perpendicular from angle A to the opposite side, and that gives you two right uh, triangles. We can solve this triangle, right, since we know an angle and a side. Okay, we've got angle aside, this is a right triangle. So that gives us this angle and we can find uh, BE and we can find AE. Um, and then on this side, since we know uh, AE and we know CE because we know A and we know this length, so we just subtract from that to get that. Um, so we know, uh, we know the sides, uh, and so we can solve this right triangle there. In particular, we can find this side and this angle. And then finally, we can find the third angle from doing that. 
And then the final case, we know all three sides. Um, then we can, again, we do the same trick. We drop the perpendicular down. We can find BE by appealing to some results of Euclid. We can then calculate AE by the Pythagoras um, theorem. And so then we've got um, three sides of a right triangle, so we can find angles. We can find the angles A and C, uh, B and C. And once we know B and C, we know A. Okay, we're not, not going to go through particular things, but this is just, uh, we can go through and can solve any. We might have done this in trig in some case. Did anyone, has anyone done these kind of problems? Do we remember from high school? Maybe, or maybe they don't torture kids anymore. I remember doing them. Okay. <laughs>